so I'm wondering, I mean, it sounds like artists have no idea what who's getting paid what. Is that true? Is that possible, even at the level that you've worked on? No, I think people have some idea. There's just a, there's a big disparity of uh, information. Uh, there are some confidentiality agreements. Uh, there are different territories with different rates of adoption, mm -hmm. which affect the overall pie of what's going to be split up. And it's just an overall different math than what people are used to in the past. Um, in the past, it was a fairly simple world where people liked music and they bought music and there was some calculation done and some of that trickled down to the artist. There's still something trickling down to the artist, but so far, at least in the States, it's still such a small number, it sort of as, as has been described, change you pick up on the street as opposed to a business model. But mm -hmm. in other parts of the world where it's a more mature, uh, where there's more absorption into the marketplace, it's a bigger pie, and so uh, even though it's a different math, uh, there, there is um, a higher uh, per stream play that gets paid out. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a complex, it's a complex um, uh, set of variables, and I don't know how, who has a really good handle on it other than Spotify and a few of the business managers. It's too early for their, their audits yet, uh, so it's still early days, but the stuff that's being decided early days is going to affect things, as we know, for a long, long time, even mm -hmm. when it does scale up and get to be a much more substantial source of revenue. And people like in, uh, MP3s and streaming services to, to radio as though that would stimulate sales. But for instance, if on Spotify, the, the ad-supported version, I can listen to you know an REM album anytime I wanted Why if, if they're on there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the trade-off. I mean, the trade-off is there is certainly a matter of music discovery and, and all those kinds of things about uh, finding new music and then perhaps going and buying music. There's some anecdotal examples of that. I think there are also a lot of anecdotal examples in broadcast research showing that it is something that is substitutional. If people can get all they want all the time, the history of recorded music, then it is going to have a very likely depressing effect on sales. So it is that choice. Some artists are answering it different ways than other artists. Some artists are withholding their content from that, or at least windowing it and, and delaying when they make it available. Other artists just figure, may as well let it out there. Um, it, it, you want to be a part of the conversation. You want to be a part of the flow of the internet. Just kind of go with the flow. It's a different analysis, uh, different um, uh, decision point uh, that people are answering in different ways. And finally, so did um, the impact of, of these new revenue streams or lack of um, have any impact at all on REM deciding to retire? Oh, no, no, no. REM decided to retire because they had, had a good run, were proud of the work they'd done, and were interested in doing other things. Uh, and you saw that royalty statement that Ed Pearson held up during the thing, where, you know, it's a very thick royalty statement that netted out to 50 bucks, but no, that's, there's no at all tie there. It, it's just that they, they'd have their day and were ready to uh, do something else with their individual lives, um, uh, as opposed to being in the group that they've been in for 30 years. Which they'll be back to eventually. Pardon me? Which they'll be back to eventually. You know, that's, that's certainly not my assumption. Uh, <laughs> I guess I wouldn't be surprised either way. Thanks so much. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate Good it. Good seeing you. Take care. Yeah, happy to do it.